Let's begin by settling the body, adopting a stable, comfortable, upright position serviceable for meditation. And think about keeping our feet flat and our back straight, torso open. Hands on the lap, right over left, with the palms upturned and the thumbs gently touching. Our eyes are gently closed or slightly open, making sure we let in enough light to remain alert. And try to maintain an awareness of not slouching, not leaning. But we also let go of any unnecessary tension or rigidity in the body. Relaxing into a stable, comfortable, upright position. And begin to let go of attending to the external environment, allowing sights and sounds to be as they are without investigation. Constraining your awareness just to the body and mind. Beginning to concentrate that awareness in the present by attending closely to the physical sensation of the air moving into and back out of the tip of the nostrils. Noticing quickly when anything other than that one physical sensation is arising in the mind and without judgment or frustration lifting your Awareness up from those distractions and placing it gently, but firmly again and again in the breath.
And then when the mind feels more calm, we generate a broad, altruistic motivation for our time. Taking a moment to widen our circle of concern, trying to embrace countless sentient beings within the field of our practice. Recognizing that just like oneself, all sentient beings deeply wish to be happy, deeply wish to be free of suffering, but just like oneself, sentient beings meet with difficulties, obstacles, painful inner and outer conditions again and again, without control. And so to work to secure the welfare of all sentient beings without exception is the best way to use one's life. And if we wish to be successful in that goal, we ourselves must become deeply habituated to the states of mind that support constructive beneficial actions. And we must eliminate the influence of states of mind that often, instead of beneficial action, give rise to harmful actions by genuinely transforming the mind in this way we can truly be of benefit to sentient beings so we take that as our purpose Then we can deepen our understanding of those ideas in the motivation by contemplating the reality that there is no difference between myself and others. From the moment that I wake up, so the moment that I go to sleep and even in my dreams, I'm trying to maximize my pleasure and avoid any pain. And so too are all other sentient beings. Whatever a person's appearance, whatever their actions, whatever their views, their opinions, they themselves are just trying to be happy like oneself. So try to bring to mind many different examples of what this looks like for yourself and for others, even including 
beings in the animal realm. oneself and others are equal as well with regard to the fact that no sentient being is more deserving than any other in being able to achieve their goals of true happiness, genuine freedom from suffering. Where there begins to be a difference is that oneself is just one, and all other sentient beings are uncountable. So adopting an attitude designed to work for the happiness of all is much more reasonable than striving for one's own happiness alone. The other difference is in terms of the actual results of these attitudes. The self-centered mind that does work for oneself alone, ignoring others, is in fact the source of pain in our lives. The attitude that cherishes others is the source of happiness and contentment. and see in our own lives the narrow perspective, the fear, the anxiety that the self-cherishing mind generates. The 
the constant drive to get more, get better, a fear of losing anything that we've accomplished. That agitation in the mind never really leaves. We approach every situation, every interaction looking for our own benefit. Never really relaxing, never actually enjoying. Try to see if you're, if in your own experience, the self cherishing mind does operate like that. laying the groundwork for not happiness, but suffering. In our relationships with others, this self-cherishing mind gives rise to the expectation of being treated deferentially, kindly, at all times by all people. Which leads to becoming overly sensitive, able to be wounded by criticism, when we act in ways that give rise to conflict. Looking out for oneself gives rise to a view of competitiveness, a view of scarcity, putting one's self, one's needs above others. which gives rise to many others appearing in a negative light.
making it more difficult to care, to love, to be compassionate. See if you're able to notice these drawbacks in your own experiences. Adopting a mind that cherishes others reverses this egoistic self-preoccupation along with all of its shortcomings. The minds of attachment and dissatisfaction and anger are all reduced the more we're able to cherish others. When we lessen the focus on oneself, a broad, wide, courageous mind arises. One's own problems appear insignificant. And we feel drawn to sentient beings. And all positive spiritual qualities that we wish to develop flow naturally, spontaneously from adopting this kind of mind. And try to again think in your own experience of at least brief moments 
where you felt like you were more successful in cherishing others than oneself. And try to get a sense and clarity of whether these benefits seem true in your experience. And then make a firm determination in the mind to, in one's activities today, this week, focus on the well being of others rather than simply getting something for oneself from others.
And then when you're ready, we'll come back together. And we'll dedicate. So recollect your altruistic motivation and think that by having engaged in this contemplation, you've actualized that motivation, which has generated positive energy in the mind. Think that you freely offer the fruit of your practice, that positive energy, for the benefit of all sentient beings without exception. Thinking strongly when that positive energy ripens, may it serve as a cause and condition to eliminate war and conflict, poverty, famine, disease, disasters, all painful inner and outer conditions. May it fully ripen the minds of all sentient beings. May they quickly meet perfect teachers and arise in the state of full enlightenment. May I too achieve the state of enlightenment in order to work for the benefit of sentient beings perfectly. May any obstacles facing the Guru's long life be completely dispelled. And may I and all sentient beings in this moment come under the joyful care and guidance of enlightened beings. May we be guided and protected until we swiftly achieve that state of enlightenment. Thank you.